What did you make of this release? Well, Bob, Bob Iger is back, and he did deliver in terms of cutting costs, reducing capital spending, and generating $1.6 billion of free cash flow. Uh, there's more to come on that side. But it's more interesting to see what are they going to be doing with such diverse businesses to try to get higher shareholder value. And, and that's the interesting part because uh, it moves away from the operating results and analysts are still reducing earnings for this year and next year, as I did. But also looking at the spinoffs possibly of ESPN. But he's doubling down on streaming with direct to consumer. They will buy uh, the part that they don't own from Hulu, from Comcast. And they got to figure out how to make money from film theatrical to broadcast to streaming. And that's tough. And it's very different than their really dominant position that they have with Disney Parks, which uh, this quarter on the numbers again only did really well because you had a 94% increase in the international parks, while domestic parks, particularly in Florida, the growth was only 4%. You know, they're already in the middle of this massive upheaval, right? The restructuring with, with Iger at the helm, and we've spoken a little bit about ESPN. Do you think they need to be bolder? What would you do? Well, they will be bolder because I think institutional investors want to see um, a greater release of value. Uh, this is not a growth company anymore. They capitulate and say, we'll finally bring the, a modest dividend increase or a dividend uh, really since the beginning of the pandemic, the end of this year. There's no buybacks. So, so why would you want to be in Disney as I do other than it has great assets and we need catalysts to recognize those? Um, and so I think in the world of the movies and entertainment industry, it's not just copying or doing what Netflix does, but it's really you have different businesses that have different valuations and the hotel parks and cruise ships is very different yeah. than video streaming. So the path forward then, what what does Bob Iger need to do to remain the sort of, you know, the, the wizard Bob Iger? Yeah, well, first of all, it's a new playbook. It's very different than what he succeeded doing in his previous um, time as CEO. And he needs time, which is why there was the, the press release a month ago that he's going to stay on for two years. It's not just for succession, but it takes time to figure out how you're going to really create different organizational structures, what kind of strategic partners, whether Disney wants to keep mostly a control or a majority interest in some of the businesses that are declining, such as ABC or other broadcast TV stations. So in terms of uh, a long-term investment in Disney, for, the, for years, you know, in this country, people have given a, a grandchild or something a share of Disney stock, right? It's just been that kind of company. Is it going to continue to be that kind of company? If, it, if Bob Iger, for some reason, doesn't quite need up to the kind of steps he needs to take that you just mentioned, you know, is, is, it, going to, is it going to still be that place, like almost like a blue chip? Just put your money there, it'll do fine. I, no, I, I think it's because there's catalysts to realize the underlying asset value of this broad company. And I, I really think he should be speaking. He's not going to speak to Nelson Peltz, but he ought to be speaking to Larry Culp at General Electric and someone I know, Ed Breen at DuPont, through his careers at Motorola, Tyco, and DuPont. They know how to get value for investors. And in many instances, it means uh, separating and spinning off businesses that are not aligned with others.